All right, so it's a middle of the night doll video. And what do we have here? We have an antique French doll. And let's take a quick look at it. And uh, here we go. Now, there are French dolls, there are German dolls that are antique, but the French are actually the ones that you wanna collect if you have the money. The French ones actually have way more value than the German ones, although there are some German ones that are actually fetching quite high prices. All right, so we have, look at this little girl here with her uh, really ghostly look. Um, she won third place in 2011 at the Patch Hog Doll Fanciers Club in Long Island. And uh, my other French doll won first prize. Uh, let's introduce you to her. Okay, so the doll on the right is my French uh, Teta Jumeau. And she's a lady doll. She's a French fashion lady doll. Look at it. Original necklaces original earrings. Look at the original pearl earrings. Um, quite beautiful. And uh, this is actually, she's my first prize winner. She won first prize in the doll contest. My other doll that is French won third prize. And this is my first prize German winner. This is a Kessner. I forgot what model it is, but I think it's a Kessner 152. And she won as well. So uh, I got multiple winners. And uh, here's our winner right here, our third prize uh, French winner along with many other dolls, German, French, French, German, German. <laughs> and as you can see, I got quite a bit. Okay, so this is like one of the last made jumeaux. I call them jumeaux, but it's really jumeau. Don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I think it's jumeau. And uh, don't be a jerk in the comments below and tell me how it's pronounced, because really, if you think about it, who really cares? And uh, I know us doll collectors are persnickety with terms and we like everything uh, actually pronounced correctly and what have you. But I got her on eBay. It was a lucky find in the middle of the night again. Um, most of all my lucky finds are in the middle of the night. And I bought her about, my goodness, uh, probably in about 2008. And I found her in the middle of the night for $150. Now the seller did not, uh, not know anything about her. Uh, did not even disclose what the mark was on the back of her head. And I knew right away it was a French doll. And so I swooped her up at the buy it now. And I was really glad I did. And uh, here we go. She has an open mouth with teeth. Now, a lot of the Jumeau or Jumeau dolls um, actually come with closed mouths. And those are the ones that are even more desirable. Those are the earlier ones. The ones with the open mouth with the teeth are actually later versions of it. But the 1907 was actually, I believe, made in 1907. So let's do a little bit of research right now. Now she's uh, actually, she's got a ball jointed composition body. Uh, her head swivels. Um, this wig is a replacement, but a really, really high quality, very expensive wig. I also um, actually made this hat for her out of straw and feathers and uh, lace and some flowers. And here she is without her hat. And I think she actually looks better without it. But I always like my little girls dressed uh, really quite fine. And let's put her hat back on. And uh, let's check out her little silk dress. Look at this, this beautiful lace dress with silk. Really, really quite lovely. And underneath, sadly, sadly, she came missing a shoe. And her original shoe is missing. And uh, that's what the uh, original shoe would have looked like, leather with a little bow and a button that goes across. Sadly, that's gone. Uh, she has no undergarments except for socks, her original socks actually. And uh, I haven't gotten a chance to actually uh, get her replacement undergarments. Not gonna probably ever do it anyway, but then again, what could you do? All right, so let's go over the history of Jumu. Now here's an actual photo uh, from the 1800s. Well, not a photo, but like a drawing of a factory making French dolls. Probably Jumeaux, um, I could tell by that face. Okay, so they made uh, different kinds of French dolls. Some of them were French fashion lady dolls, like the other one you saw that won first prize. She's on a leather body. Now her head is made out of bisque and shoulders are made out of bisque. The rest of the doll is entirely made of uh, kid leather stuffed with cork. This particular one has a ball jointed body. And uh, so, okay, let's get back to our factory in Paris. So as you can see, they had uh, women employed mostly to be doing these type of jobs. The men that would work there would be like the foremen or the people that did the more technical things like woodworking 
and producing certain uh, parts of the doll on lates. Don't know if I'm correct in that term, but uh, here we go. So here's all the various parts. These are the little springs that would go into the neck that made the head swivel. Um, we have the head separately. And then this lady is just putting them together. Um, she's actually putting the dolls together and they came in pieces. And some of them actually, you can see their torsos are uh, in separate pieces. They would actually slice the torsos in half and place um, a, a sort of sound mechanism inside of their bodies as well. Not all of them came with that, but that was really innovative. Now it says here that Pierre Jumeau entered the doll business in 1841 when he married Adelaide Mayoth, niece of doll maker Lucius Junius Heresy. Jumu soon built his own company with 65 dressmakers, tailors, menders, leather workers, and hat trimmers, and focused on cost control and quality. Now, I told you, every single person had a different job to do. One would insert the eyes. One would make the glass eyes out of hand-blown glass. Another person would make the body. Now, another person would assemble the body. They would have a lady that would make dresses for them. Another person making wigs for them. Another person actually attaching the wigs to them. There was um, somebody that would box them up and put them in boxes. And there was so many different people doing so many different things on an assembly line. Now, if you have this Jumeau in your collection, you're quite rich. This is a smiling Jumeau. And oh my God, that, if you have that particular one, which is very rare, you're going actually to become rich. Okay, here we go. As Jumeau became the world's foremost doll manufacturer, by the way, all the dolls made by them were quite expensive. The Germans were actually the toy making, Sonneberg in Germany was the toy making capital of the world. They undercut every single country in the toy making business. Uh, they actually were in a fierce competition with the French, but the French, instead of making a mass produced item, which was mass produced, they made it more for the upper classes. Uh, they made uh, finer clothing. Um, finer bisque heads, um, everything about them was finer. And so a French doll was more expensive than a German doll. A German doll was more made for the middle class or lower echelon of society uh, and more affordable. Uh, the French ones were for people that had better means, uh, bigger pocketbooks and bigger budgets. Okay, so as Jumeau became the world's foremost doll manufacturer, his dolls advertised French high fashion. So basically, these dolls were actual models for the clothing um, that was in style and showed everybody the latest fashions. Um, so in the 1849 Paris Exposition, uh, he was awarded the company, uh, uh, he was awarded the bronze medal. And it says here in quotes, the clothed doll is not only a plaything, but often serves to a foreigner as a model of the French fashions. Quite interesting. Okay, so you see various French Jumeau dolls over here. This one looks like my 1907, very similar. And this one looks like my first prize uh, ribbon winner who had leather hands with each individual fingers in kid leather. Um, and that's a French fashion lady doll. The other ones were meant to look like little girls or what they call, I think I'm going to pronounce it wrong, babies or babies. <laughs> okay, so Jumeau won a medal of progress at the 1873 Vienna ex ex Exhibition. Describing Jumeau's dolls, one reporter gushed, Mr. Jumeau of Paris makes doll heads of glazed porcelain with the greatest perfection. He has surpassed in beauty the products we used to buy from Germany, which is now the red-headed stepchild, because the French dolls is where it's at. And again, this is a lady doll dressed in fine, fine, fine fashions of the day. And here we go. This is a smaller one. And this is actually a shoulder head. And the body was actually uh, made out of leather. And the shoulders up into here is bisque. And the head, which swivels inside this little saucer and cup, uh, bisque molded shoulder area and the head would tilt from side to side is made out of bisque as well. And uh, okay, in 19th century America, influential cultural com commentators such as Lydia Maria Child stressed pragmatic playthings. Girls should, sold do should sew doll clothes rather than indulge in finery. By contrast, early Jumeau dolls celebrated the fashion created in Paris where the dolls were made. Now here's an 1870s Jumeau 
with closed mouth. And I told you these closed mouth ones are worth a lot of money. Look at her beautiful original gown. And it says, Succession Success. When Pierre retired around 1878, his son Emile, a trained architect, took over Jumeau. He ran the firm with the same determination as his father. His wife, Ernestine, brought her tremendous fashion sense to the business. Under their leadership, the company reached its zenith. Now, here's the 1890 dolls, and they even made um, Caucasian dolls and African-American dolls. They also made um, Indian style dolls, um, you know, with brown complexion. And these are quite rare because not too many people wanted them, unfortunately. And so here we go. Here's two such examples, 1890s. And so then they started making dolls look like girls instead of ladies. Uh, because it says here, what makes a doll popular? Emile Jumeau found a winning formula with his baby dolls or baby dolls named for the word, uh, the French word baby. These dolls looked like young children, not like the grown ladies previous dolls had resembled. Girls like playing with a doll that looked like them. And this is, uh, let's see, at 1885 to 1899, Jumeau doll wearing a little girl's dress. Very, very pretty with a closed mouth. Notice the closed mouth. That one is more valuable. All right, let's keep going. And here we go. And the Jumu baby and its dear little mama. And here we go. It says, doll play has long reinforced maternal expectations. Emile's savvy marketing materials underline the need for gentle and nurturing girls. In a letter of Jumu, baby to her little mother, a booklet packaged with Jumu's, a doll explained, I, by the way, I feel strange saying the word Jumu. It sounds like a cow is mooing. I like to say Jumo. <laughs> and uh, a doll explains how delighted she is to have a new mother. And wow, look at that. There's the doll on the table. And uh, that's pretty, pretty cool. Now, here we go. Um, now, they also started to uh, really invent cool things to make the doll even more special. Now, this one is a mechanical sleep eye version. And this is what the inside of the head looks like. And so, you can see with these little uh, cranks and what have you inside the head, it would have like a lever. You would pull the lever back and forward and back and forward and the eyes would open and close, open and close. And that was revolutionary. So basically, before 1885, um, a doll's eyes would be considered set into place. And uh, his revolutionary idea actually created sleeping eye dolls. And the Germans uh, quickly actually came up with their rendition of the sleeping eye doll. So uh, 1885, uh, they started to have sleep eye dolls. <laughs> now, Thomas Edison created the first singing doll, but used German doll heads. And I actually have... Uh, this version of the doll without the metal torso. By the way, look at this torso. Composition arms, metal torso, little grates so music could come out of it. It would have a crank and it would actually play like a little wax cylinder record. And uh, yeah, so Tem Thomas Edison thought his singing doll first sold in 1890 would be a hit. It used wax cylinders to recite nursery rhymes, but the screechy voice horrified listeners and the mechanism broke easily. Disgruntled customers returned the malfunctioning toys and the product failed. And uh, he spent so much money, Thomas Edison, on this actual flop that he actually lost like millions of dollars. All right, so here is the Thomas Edison flop doll. The doll that actually made him lose millions of dollars. Now, he used two different German doll makers, one by Simon and Halbig. I have this actual model in my collection, and another one by Barr and Proschild. I have that one in my collection, too, but without the singing torso. Uh, here we go. You ready? Okay, this is 49 seconds. Listen to how creepy this sounded.
Okay, so here's one of the versions by Thomas Edison right here, made by Simon and Halbig. And here's another one of the same model with brown eyes. And uh, yes, these were flops. They also used Bar and Prochtile dolls. I have a Bar and Prochtile back there, but not the same model that Thomas Edison used. But this one was the one Thomas Edison used for those singing dolls. But Jumeau came out with their version. Jumeau, Jumeau, whatever you want to call it. And uh, theirs was uh, called the Phonograph Baby, or Baby Jumeau. And uh, look at this. It had a little record player. <laughs> look at this. That's so cool. And it had like a grill that opened up on the body of the doll, as you can see here. And I believe it had a crank. And uh, you would actually hear songs or voices coming out of the doll which is really quite frightening. Now this was 1895, and you can see some of the dolls here now are having open mouths with teeth. Now here's an 1890 actual clockwork Jumu doll, and uh, they made these actual amazing clockwork geared dolls. There would be clockwork inside. So for example, she's holding this little tea, this little teapot with a saucer and a cup, and she would actually move her arm and pour and make a pouring motion into the cup. They had all different kinds of dolls with this clockwork mechanism. They didn't just pour tea into a cup. Some of them played musical instruments. Some of them did magic tricks. It was amazing. So here are some of these clockwork dolls in action, these French dolls. And uh, okay, so I'm gonna actually show you a little snippet of it playing. Look at the one here all the way on the left. Watch her with the fan and the mirror. They play music also, which is amazing. And here's another one, another Jumu. That's the smiling one I told you about. That's really rare, look at that. Now, sadly, around 1895, I told you earlier, the Germans were the toy capital of the toy making world. And uh, they actually undercut everything. And they made a quite good product. Um, they made high quality dolls as well. And so what happened is with the, um, you know, the mass produced German dolls, they actually started to put the French makers and Jumu wasn't the only one out of business. So they had to get uh, a whole bunch of French doll makers had to get together immediately and discuss what are we going to do about the Germans. <laughs> the Germans are making us lose our shirts. And so they actually created a syndicate of multiple French manufacturers uh, called SFBJ. And I'm not going to pronounce it correctly. Societe, Societe Francaise de Fabrication de Bebes et Jouets. So something about babies and toys. And so they all got together as a conglomerate to cut production expenses. And that's where my doll comes in. So this is the butt end of the Jumeau dynasty. When Jumeau, or Jumeau, whatever you want to call it, got together with a bunch of different doll makers, uh, French doll makers, and uh, conglomerated all together as one big factory. And so, for example, Jumeau brought whatever molds of his heads were like, probably like, uh, left in the in the factory, brought his and several other French doll makers, brought all oh, whatever heads they had left in the factory, put them all together, pulled them together, put the bodies all together, and made uh, this doll as a group uh, to save money, uh, to beat the Germans, or at least try to stay in business. Now, SFBJ, or this conglomerate of multiple French makers, 
uh, actually stayed probably in business until around the 1940s. And then that was it. It was finito. Um, then we had a lot of American dolls. There was just so many things um, actually undercutting them. They couldn't do it anymore. Now, this is Princess Elizabeth dolls um, and Princess Margaret Rose dolls um, after uh, Princess, um, you know, the princess, uh, I'm sorry, after uh, Queen um, Elizabeth. And uh, yeah, there we go. So here we have her and her sister. Really, really, really quite cool. And this is them when they were little girls, and they made them into dolls. By the way, these were made in 1938. I forgot to mention that. And here we go on to the next. So let's go ahead. Conclusion. <laughs> and here we go. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful old, um, probably 1880s, 1890s, closed mouth Jumu. And it says, conclusion, not an end of an era. So SFBJ dissolved in 1958, but Jumu dolls and Door as treasured mementos of play past. For more than a century, the Jumu company succeeded by celebrating fashion, embracing innovation, and giving girls beautiful playthings. So if you're collecting Jumu dolls, you want to get the earliest dolls. You want to get the ones with the closed mouths, the French fashion lady dolls, um, the uh, later ones that came when the SFBJ and all the French makers, including Jumu, got together and conglomerated is not when you want to get a doll. Um, actually, this one is actually painted quite nicely. Uh, the only problem is, is that their quality started to wane around this time. So sometimes you'll find a Jumu doll that was made during the SFBJ era, and it won't be painted very well. Um, it won't be crafted very well. The face will be, actually, the bisque will be uneven and rough. But this one is a good example. Now, the uh, eyebrows weren't hand-painted like they used to. They used decals or templates and then uh, painted the strokes one by one, whereas they used to do it free-handedly. Things really, really started to change when SFBJ got together with all of the doll makers. The quality went into the shitter. So... Although she won third place, it's not upsetting me because her counterpart, my other doll, won first prize. And my other German doll won first place. And believe it or not, I had uh, several other German dolls. And my other German doll won second prize that day. And a third one of my German dolls won third place. So I pretty much won every single category except for uh, second place in French dolls. And uh, I did good that day. And uh, $150 for this doll is quite a bargain. Now, what is she worth? And what do they generally sell for? The 1907 Jumeau versions or the SFBJ versions of the earlier Jumeau dolls? Let's check it out. See, here's a small one. And it's uh, one that's actually not wearing original antique clothes. You can clearly see these are replacements. And uh, this one sold for $1,229. Not bad for a $150 investment. Let's see some other ones and what they sell for with the 1907 mark on them. Okay, so if you have a large one, and when I say large, I'm talking like 30 inches tall. Now you're talking. Now that's a $2,795. Really crazy. And uh, we have, let's see, we have another 1907 over here, but it's 25 inches, much larger than my cabinet size. Selling for $2,500. Then we have another one that's probably about 20 inches tall, much larger than mine, going for $16.95. But here we go. A rare cabinet size one, 14 inches, um, is selling for $1,179. And then we have another one over here selling for $1,998. So as you can see, these dolls are not cheap if you want to collect them. Here's even one with all original clothing. And accessories with the original booklet and box. Really quite cool. Now I'm going to show you the difference in price if you have an earlier Jumu uh, compared to a 1907 open mouthed Jumu. Now, the 14 inch head one, um, I'm sorry, the 14 inch one that's a cabinet size about the same size as mine, selling for $1,239.99. Um, so that's like uh, 12, you know, 1200 and change. Um, but if you have an earlier one, there we go, with a closed mouth on a ball jointed body, this is what we're talking here. We're talking at least five to six thousand dollars. Yes, for the earlier ones with the closed mouth. 
Now this is a large one, but my one that won first prize um, is this one, except for the hair is different and the clothes are different. But uh, selling for six thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Mine was appraised for fifty six to six thousand dollars, and that was over ten years ago. Actually, fifteen years ago. So I can only imagine what mine's valued at now since it got first prize. And yes, first prize ri ribbons actually add value to an antique doll. And here's another closed mouth. Uh, they call this one a portrait jumeau, selling for four thousand three hundred ninety eight dollars. Very, very expensive dolls. And if you have some of these ones, yes, we're talking money. $18,900. The one on the right, $17,995 for a 33-inch one. Yes, the bigger, the more money. And this one, 30-inch tall, $28,500. And this is what the French fashion ladies would have looked like. They would have had these leather bodies, really quite cool. And here we go, an automaton or a clockwork one. Um, being sold for $22,000. She's a gypsy. Oh my God, that's crazy. And here we go. Look at the prices of some of these. $13,900. And these are the French fashion lady type dolls. $11,995. $9,980. Uh, this one, $9,750. And again, the closed mouth ones being worth more. And wait, there's more. And here we go. Uh, this one, $9,500. Um, this one actually was not made by Jumeau. It was made by Fran uh, Francois Gauthier. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And then another one, uh, $8,980. And yet another one, $8,500 uh, for a small 15-inch closed mouth Jumeau doll. Okay, so the quick story. By the way, here's our 1907 doll. Look how pretty she looks with some German dolls. Another French doll over here. Um, this is my first prize German winner right here. She's got her blue ribbon, Kessner. I think it's a 152. Original clothes, look at that. And here's my Jumeau uh, lady doll, or uh, I think they pronounce them Poupard or Poupée or fashion lady. And uh, the backstory to her, by the way, look at that. All this original um, hair, original uh, necklaces and jewelry. She even has a parasol. I can't even uh, get in there to show you. But in the middle of the night, again, I can't sleep. I'm one of those insomniacs. Somebody listed this at 3.30 in the morning on uh, like eBay. And they didn't know anything about it. And they just wrote, antique doll, uh, fair condition, $750, buy it now. Didn't say if it was French or German or whatever. And I knew right away by that face, that was a jumeau. And there was no way in hell that you can get a jumeau, especially a French fashion lady doll, for $750. So I called my father up at 3.30 in the morning and woke his ass up. And I said, Dad, I have to borrow $750 from you right now to buy this. It's very rare. And uh, send me PayPal right now. And he actually trusted me. I told him, I'll pay you back in one week. I promise. And he sent it to me. I hit the buy it now. And I nearly crapped my pants waiting for her to arrive. I was afraid since the seller wrote fair in the description that it was going to have a broken head. Um, there was very little pictures. And when she arrived, she arrived perfect and much better than I expected. I got her appraised. And she's worth at least five to six grand right now. And I got it appraised many years ago. At least 15. When did I buy her? Like 15, 18 years ago? Uh, she's probably worth about seven, eight thousand dollars now. So there you go. For a $750 investment, this one, $150 investment and worth at least, uh, at least a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars. There we go. We have our German Kessner dolls. And this is another French doll. I forgot the name. Julienne something. And, uh, yep, we got some Kessners in there. We got more German dolls. Kessner, that is a Kessner as well. Two Kessner girls right here. Original clothing. Look at that. Very, very beautiful. We have Simon and Halbig over here, 739. A Simon and Halbig, 739 over here. We have what looks like a, I think it's a Bar and Prost child, a German doll. Uh, then we have one hidden over the hair, <laughs> down, um, yeah, they wear very, very extravagant hats, so it's there's like no room left for them. And that one is quite beautiful. I'm trying to get a focus on her. Can we do that? And yeah, she's hidden. We're not going to actually get to see her. So there we go. That's the story. That's uh, the story of Jumu. 
And uh, that's the story of this doll winning first prize, this doll winning first prize, this doll winning third prize, and my other German doll somewhere hidden winning second prize. And they all won that day, got on the news, and that was history. So long. Thanks for watching. See you guys all soon. And sayonara.